as I as I indicated uh, when we started the, the case, there were some stipulations uh, that the, the parties entered into. I read to you uh, the stipulations up front. I'm going to read them to you again in this evidence. Uh, you shouldn't put any more emphasis on these stipulations than anything else you've heard here or saw out on the view, but it is evidence for your consideration. So let me read you those stipulations, then we'll get into our uh, closing arguments. <coughs> Prosecution, the defense, and the above cases agree the following facts are true. The stipulation is evidence. You, the jury, must accept the facts as true. Thus, it has been stipulated that on or about October 19, 2011, the defendants in this case were in Veterans Park. At the time of the above, at, at the time that the above defendants were in the park, the park was closed. Closes from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m and they were personally given orders to leave the park by Manchester police officers. After being given orders to leave Veterans Park, the defendants remained in the park in defiance of the order to leave knowing that they were, li were not licensed or privileged to enter or remain. Or, or remain. Now, those are stipulations for... I'm sorry, um, I believe you said 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. when it's 11 p.m. to 7 a.m.? You all do what I do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So those are stipulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and they are uh, for your for you to consider as true. Okay. Now we're going to go to closing arguments. Uh, I appreciate you take particular attention to both counsel's arguments, and then I'll give you the uh, the jury instructions, and you'll study deliberations. Okay. All set. opening said that this is a case about choices and this is a case about choices this is a case about the choice of law that the city of Manchester chose to uphold on the one hand there's the curfew ordinance that says you can't be in the park between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. and and that that curfew is only good in the fiefdom of Manchester. I like to think of it as a pebble. It's a pebble of the law. On the other hand, the law that they could have chosen to uphold is the most cherished rights that we have as citizens of this country. And that is the right to assemble, to petition our government, and to free expression. That is the mountain of laws. And they chose to execute the pebble. The state, in its opening, called our defendants special and unique. And you know what? They are special and unique. Think about what they did two years ago. There were hundreds of people that were involved in the Occupy movement. There were scores of people that camped out on the parks in order to express their views and to create this new community. And uh, they are dedicated and committed people. I mean, think about it. It's October. It's cold. They're living in tents and sleeping bags in the city parks. They're using porta potties <coughs> and eating out of a RV. Every single one of those people were committed and dedicated. But when push came to shove and it was time to make a decision, about what they were going to do when the police came to enforce the ordinance, only these folks were the ones that drew the line and to say, I'm not going. This is my park. It is a public park. I have the right 
to express myself. I have the right to peaceably assemble. And Captain Cooter, no matter how charming you are, and no matter how you want to, this to end without an arrest, I'm sorry, I'm not going to comply. I'm going to stand fast for my rights. That's what these people did, and that's what makes them special and unique. And you know what? The Constitution doesn't defend itself. If there aren't people like my clients who are willing to stand up and say no, then we're going to lose those rights. So some of you may be thinking, yeah, but that's all well and good, Barbara. But this is a trespass case, and we're here to decide whether or not these people violated the trespass law, and you admit that they did. So where are we supposed to go? The state has proven all the elements. This is what this case is about, trespass. I say to you, uh, so you may be asking yourself, well, can we find them not guilty even if they did in fact commit this trespass? And the answer to you is yes, you can, and yes, you should. Uh, the state alluded to it in its opening. It's called the, well, the law of nullification, and the, and the judge is going to tell you what that means. But what it means, what it says is this. Even if you find that the state has proven each and every element of the offense charged beyond a reasonable doubt, you may still find the defendant not guilty if you have a conscientious feeling that a not guilty verdict would be a fair result in the case. That's the law. That is the law. And that's why we have jurors. And, and you know, some people call this the right to ignore the law. But you know what, folks? It's not the right to ignore the law. That's not what I'm asking you to do. That's not what my defendants are asking you to do. They're not asking you to ignore the law. They are asking you to apply the correct law. They are asking you to apply the mountain and not the pebble. They're asking you to choose the right law in this case. So let's talk a little bit about what the law is. You've, you've, heard, you've heard us allude to the law throughout this case. Um, Maybe some of you have memorized the Constitution. I suspect many of you have not. Um, so this is what Part 1, Amendment 1 of the Constitution of the United States says. It says, Congress shall make no laws respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. And that is exactly what these folks were doing. Now you notice that it doesn't say, but you can only do it in the daytime, or you can only do it when it's convenient for municipal officials, or you can only do it when you're not bothering anybody else. No. Sometimes to express yourself in a free democracy, sometimes it looks a little messy. And sometimes it irks city officials. But you know what? That's just the way it is. That is the price we pay to annoy a city official to live in a free society. That's what these people were doing here. They were expressing themselves, assembling peaceably. You heard about all, you heard about the safety committee, you heard about everything, you heard about how they kept the park cleaner than it had ever been. You heard about the no drinking, you heard about the fact that they patrolled and made sure everyone was safe. Could there be a more peaceable assembly 
than the assembly that these folks participated in. But I want to tell you something else. What, one of the things that you may or may not know is that not only is there a United States Constitution, but every state has their own constitution. And sometimes our state constitution gives even more protection to individual liberty than the United States Constitution. And you can imagine that in the live free or die state, <laughs> We have a lot more protection for individual liberty, even than the United States Constitution. So, and uh, the law of our land is this. New Hampshire Constitution, Article 22, free speech. Free speech and liberty of the press are, get this, essential to the security of freedom in a state. <coughs> They ought, therefore, to be inviolably preserved. So the city officials of Manchester had choices. They could say, you've got to get off the park because we have an ordinance. Or they could do, they could follow the law, the law of the land, and say, I am going to inviolably preserve your right to free speech. And that means that the curfew ordinance doesn't count against you. The curfew ordinance is fine for what it's meant to do, which is to keep people out of the parks in the middle of the night, keep people from drinking, keep people from assaulting each other in the parks, keep, you know, keep the parks secure. But when it comes to free speech, when it comes to the most cherished of our ideals in this society, the curfew has to bend. Not the Constitution. It's the curfew that has to give way. So I'm asking you, who broke the law in this case? Was it these folks that stood up for their rights and by doing so, violated a curfew ordinance and then a trespass law? Or is it the city officials who did not inviolably preserve the rights of the people to peaceful, peaceful assembly and speech? Are these criminals or are they patriots? That's the question for you. Article 32 the people have a right in an orderly and peaceable manner to assemble and consult upon the common good, give instructions to their representatives, to request of the legislative body by way of petition or remonstrance regress of the wrongs done to them and of the grievances they suffer. They have the right in an orderly and peaceable manner to assemble. That's what they were doing. That is what they were doing. Um, you know, there is a, a perfect metaphor for this case. And it's actually found right here in this courthouse. I don't know whether any of you noticed it on the way when you first came into the room for jury assembly, that there's a striking mobile in the hallway. And if you look carefully at that mobile, you see that it's, uh, it, it, it's a depiction of the Bill of Rights. And it's all crumpled up. And that's exactly what this case is about. The city officials of Manchester crumpled up the Bill of Rights and tossed it away in order to elevate a curfew ordinance. And what we're asking you to do is to say, uh-uh, uncrumple that Bill of Rights. We're going to stand firm for our right to assemble, for our right to express ourselves. There's another a very important clause in our Constitution. 
I'm sure you've all heard we have a right to a trial by jury. And that is it's expressed one way in the United States Constitution, it's expressed another way in the New Hampshire Constitution. No, per, no subject, subject shall be arrested, imprisoned, despoiled, or deprived of his property, immunity, or privileges, put out of the protection of the law, exiled, or deprived of his life, liberty, or estate, but by the judgment of his peers. This was radical back in the days of the American Revolution, back in the days when they, our forefathers created the Constitution to say, our rights don't mean anything unless they can be upheld. We can speak to a jury of our peers. Uh, Elizabeth Edwards referred to that in her, in her testimony. And uh, this is what Thomas Jefferson had to say about the right to a jury trial. I consider trial by jury as the only anchor ever yet imagined by man by which a government can be held to the principles of its constitution. In other words, folks, the First Amendment, the right to assemble, the right to speech, the right to petition, it's not worth the parchment that it's written on unless the people, the people stand up for it and uphold it. And it's because of the uh, foresight of the framers of the Constitution, uh, we get to stand before you, the people, and we don't have to go in front of a magistrate appointed by the government. Uh, we don't have to stand in front of the mayor of Manchester and make our case. We don't have to stand in front of the landed gentry or the CEOs, or the wealthy, we stand and we bring our case to the people. Our, as you heard John Safford, the clerk, say, this case is to be tried by a jury of their peers. These defendants put themselves upon their country for trial. Which country you are? That's what that means. You get to decide. this business that, you know, the rights, they're not absolute. You, you heard the state ask about that. I mean, there's a reasonable time, place, and manner restriction on speech, and that's absolutely correct. That, that is absolutely right. You know, if, if my clients wanted to stand up right now and start expressing themselves, you know, we are the 99. Whatever. This isn't the time. This isn't the place for it. This building is designed for another purpose, and what they would be doing would be disruptive. But the public parks are set aside, as the as U.S. Supreme Court said, set aside for time immemorial, just for the purpose of assembly and of debate. That is the place for it. And the time for democracy, to quote Beth Grunewald, is 24 hours a day. Who were they disrupting between 11, the hours of 11 and 7 a.m.? Were they disrupting traffic? Were they disrupting people sleeping in residences? No, they weren't. They were not disrupting. It was the time, it was the place, and it was the manner. The state raised a couple of questions, you know, like, oh, well, couldn't they just have this demonstration in a, in a, pri a private property? Well, I mean, maybe if you're Donald Trump, you can have an Occupy on your property, on your private property. But most of us aren't Donald Trump, and most of us don't have the kind of private property that would allow for this kind of assemblage. That's why there are public spaces in order to allow the people to come together and to discuss. It's, there's no way to, to, to go to private property. Well, could
couldn't you just leave the park after 11 a.m. and, and uh, put yourselves in the streets or in the sidewalks? That makes no sense. The park was a safe place to be. The park was designed for an assembly, not the streets, not the sidewalks. Well, what about, uh, could you, um, let's see, what else did they say? Well, what about, if, if you folks allow, uh, you know, them to stay overnight here, then you're just allowing, what about people that want to come camp? This wasn't about camping. And that's a fundamental misunderstanding of what was happening here. If the state makes that argument to you. These people weren't camping. These people were coming together to do a time-honored act of civil expression. That's what this was about. And, uh, and to say this is about camping trivializes it and demeans it. You know that that's not what this is about. So let me just sum up. For the state, this case is about a curfew ordinance. To the defendants, this case is about the core values that we stand for as American people. Uh, in a few minutes, you're going to go in, and you're going to deliberate, and you're going to come to a verdict. And at the end of the day, when you leave here, and you go home to your families or your friends or your colleagues when you speak about this case, I want you to be able to say to them, today I did something really important. Today I stood up and I defended and I preserved the Constitution of the United States. That's what we're asking you to do, no less.